different kinds of relationships. You could have humans to their fellow humans or humans to the, uh, to the outside world, other creations. You could have people to God and you could have someone to themselves. Those are the kinds of relationships you could have. We talked about there are uh, fundamental challenges that we have. This is very important. And I mentioned to understand, like, you know, there are some, you know, Christianity and other religions have the idea of, of a, um, you know, original sin, person is very dirty. We, we don't have that idea. We do, though, have an idea that, that a person who is essentially a rooted in, in a spiritual component and as a body has different parts that are pulling in different ways. The person essentially is a higher element. Our, our real selves is our, our, our nefesh, our shama, our, our soul, let's call it for now. There's a lot of different parts to that. But, and then a person has a combination of body and soul. And one pulls one way and one pulls the other way. And a person has to navigate what they're going to become. Everyone has free will. You can follow the dictates of a spiritual, righteous, kind, giving, loving life, or you can follow the dictates of a negativity. Now, it doesn't mean the body is bad. It doesn't mean that. But it means the body tends towards certain things. And we talked about three fundamental traits that, are in the person, and I explained last time how the world got messed up from the time of creation, and we got up to Abraham, and how it got messed up. And the root of it is because we have what's called this Yetzir Hara, this part of us that pulls the negativity. If you listen and you don't overcome parts of you that want to do things that are inappropriate, then you'll go into a bad way. And the truth is, the negative way will continue to pull you. It's a very important thing to realize. A person can make a mistake and fix it up. The longer you wait to fix it up and the more you do something, the worse it is because you become ensconced in that way of seeing the world. And we talked about three main traits that line up with these three different kinds of relationships. A person can relate to himself and that has to do with a person and the negative being a person who is overly desirous unbridled desire. I just want my pleasure. We see people like that. I just, I, that's what I care about. You know, you know, it's a, you know, to eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. So that world is, and that's a large part of the world even today. We'll get to today's world. That's a very uh, powerful component. That means you're tuning into your body, your lower part, and you just want that. Then there is the part that between man and his fellow man, people have jealousy, and that leads to anger and, 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 and control. And I want to uh, be lauding over other people. That's the other side. So there's umbrella desire, there's jealousy, which leads to anger, and murder, and all those things, and control. And then we talked about there's also the idea that people want to honor for themselves and not to God. That was the third thing that can mess someone up we talked about. And that lines up between man and God. Now, those three, three root traits we talked about last uh -huh. is now the place where the world really went nuts between the beginning of creation till, till Abraham, 2000 year period, he's born in the year 1948, 1948 to the creation of the world that Abraham is born. And then in his time, so the first 2000 years, because by the time he's 52, according to different explanations, he really understands everything. But, but whatever it is, the first 2000 years, God created a world and said, whoever wants to find God, I am here. There were no Jewish people yet, as opposed to non-Jews. No, it was a universalist system. Everyone had the same option to find God, but they didn't. And that was we talked about last week. They started chasing after one of these three things, either illicit relations, I can't control my desires, murder, control, I, I have jealousy, I want to control others, or <laughs> a breakdown in denying God and saying, I am I'm my own God, or I'll do idolatry because I'll manipulate the stars in certain ways, whatever it is. Now, that was 2,000 years. We get to Abraham. Abraham now comes along and he, find, he sees God. 
And we talked about it briefly. He, he at a young age, follows an idolater, says this makes no sense. Abraham was the great philosopher. He looked at the world and said, these things cannot be in control. The sun goes down at night. The moon can't be in control. It's gone in the day. These things are, doesn't make any sense. He thought about it deeply as a young person, and he realized there has to be a God. And the Midrash says that then God revealed himself to him. When Abraham did all the work, God revealed himself to Abraham, which is very important for us. We have to realize that, that we need to do the work. If we do the work, it says, the Midrash says, God says the person is Jewish, not Jewish, male, female, whatever they are, wherever they are, whatever they're from, it goes according to your effort. So if you look at the world properly and you see the world in the right way, you act, then God will respond to your effort. If you open your heart a little bit, then God will give you more understanding. So when Abraham went and he looked and he said, there has to be God, and he tried, God said, okay, now you've made yourself a proper vessel, and now I'm going to reveal myself. God reveals himself to Abraham. Now, Abraham, now what I'm going to talk about today is from the point of Abraham. So uh, I know we have, I don't, I, don't, I don't see Tar right now, but I'm going to get to Tar's point. We'll get to today's crazy world. It might take us another week or two. But, but I, I need to go in order here because you got to understand what today's craziness is. It's a different craziness. So now, but I'm now at the point of Abraham. Avram, he is called Abraham, Avram, Ivri, Abraham, the Hebrew. As I mentioned before, the word Ivri also means on the other side, because the whole world was on one side, and he's on the other. It's the ultimate revolution. The world, according to 2,000 years, the world is a mess. Even though Adam was a prophet, even though Adam and Chav, Adam and were prophets, they, they, they perceive God, the world is now a mess. And you can go look at archaeology. You'll see. Human sacrifice is crazy, crazy stuff. Because people's negative impulses were not directed properly, and they overcame them, and they acted in this terrible, terrible way. Comes on Abraham, and he starts to change it. Now, what was Abraham's trait? And this is what I want to tie in when I said last week, the trait that Abraham had and the qualities and how that was the opposite of what was going on before. So we said people, people have, let's say, uh, um, unbridled desire. Now let's think about a person with unbridled desire is just chasing after his pleasures. He just, and let's think about the other kind of person, the jealous person who wants control. Let's take those two extremes for a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an example of two American presidents. Uh, to avoid politics, I'll go back, you know, a little bit further in history. They had a president like Richard Nixon and a president like Bill Clinton. Two very different people. And if you think about it, you'll realize you know people like this also. One guy is everyone likes him. He is a, you know, he's a real giver. He's out there. He's, he's, he's a personable. And he may well be, as Bill Clinton was, caught up in very immoral, lewd behavior. That means the person is like a giver. He's a people person, but not really. Because it's for his own pleasure. He's a nice social human being. He could be called a great giver. He walks into the room. Everyone loved Bill Clinton walks into the room. You felt like, hey, shake your hand. And that quality of giving when it was misused was a giver for his own pleasure, his own unbridled desire. That's called listening relations. Take out Richard Nixon. That's not what he was. He was a power person. He was a person who was not the kind of guy everyone liked because between the way he acted with other people was he wanted power, wanted control. He wasn't drawn to the, the desires and the unbridled desire because what he really wanted was power and control of others. So people maybe didn't like him as much. He wasn't that people person. He was a power person. 
And if you think about it, you'll realize, you'll realize very clearly uh, both people in the news and people you know. The person who is the, the, the very personable one, um, if he's giving, but he's not giving properly, he could be caught up in, in pleasures that are inappropriate. And the one who is, is power oriented, that might not be his thing. He may, he may have both. I mean, there are people who have both, that blend both. But you have to know what the person's main issue is. So there's the one who has, wants control and he's not chasing after his pleasures. He likes to be bossing people around. That, that, that gets him, you know, that turns him on. Like I, I want to be controlled as opposed to the guy sitting under the, you know, the palm tree and, you know, just, just trying to get his pleasure. He wants control, he wants power. Two different approaches. Abraham comes into the world and he is the giver. How did he get people to hear about God? He says his tent was open on all four sides and he said, whoever wants, come on in. Come on in. And they said, what? Come in? He said, yeah, you come in because I'm going to give to you the same way God gave to us. But God gave to us? What do you mean? This world's got all these problems and messed up. He says, you're alive. Can't you see the things? This world's not to hurt you. This world is to give to you. You might not always understand it. Like we don't always understand if our parents did something good or us as parents did something for our children. We might not, the child might not realize it because maybe I might have to punish him or something, but the goal is all good. So Abraham makes this revolution. He's the giver. And he has all these people following him now. There's a movement. It says in the text, he converted people. There were tons of followers of Abraham. Okay, now, Abraham has a son named Ishmael. Ishmael is the father of the Arab nation. Okay? Now, Ishmael, as the son of Abraham, has some very positive qualities. He also has some negative qualities. Let's just go for those who don't know the story here. Abraham is married to Sarah. Abraham and Sarah are married. A perfect couple, Abraham and Sarah. But Sarah can't have children. She's bad. So Sarah tells Abraham to take the handmaiden of Sarah, who was named Hagar. And Hagar, she's the mother of the Arab nation. She was an Egyptian princess. Okay, if you look in the text, what happened was when Abraham and Sarah went down to Egypt, God did miracles because Pharaoh, Pharaoh was the name of all the Egyptian uh, leaders, that's the, the king's name. The Pharaoh at the time, <coughs> Pharaoh, and wanted to take her for himself, and he got all these plagues, which was a precursor to the plagues much later. But they realized, whoa. This person is so special. What's going on? He calls Abraham in. He says, this is not your sister. He says, your sister. They were afraid they're going to kill him. This is your wife. Go. Now, when, when this happens, listen to this amazing thing. Pharaoh sees this, these miracles that have supernatural things happening to Abraham and Sarah. And he sells his daughter, the daughter of Pharaoh, Hagar. You're better off going with these people, even being their handmaiden, than staying here and being a princess. So Agar had some stuff going for her. She was, she was, had a lot of stuff going for her. She left the palace to be in the house of these spiritual <sighs> happening at the time. Okay, now, so Hagar, Sarah says to Abraham, I can't have children, marry. Hagar and have children from Hagar. And she does. She has a child named Ishmael. Ishmael is going to be the father of the Arab nation. Now, I want you to understand this. And it's very important because if you understand what I'm telling you now, you will understand all of the politics that are happening in Israel with the Jews and the Arabs. Because it didn't start today, it started thousands of years ago. So now Yishmael is born, and he's the only son of Abraham. Then the text says that God spoke to Abraham, said, you're going to have a child from Sarah. 
And 13 years later, we have Sarah gets pregnant and born is Yitzhak Isaac, the father of the Jewish people. Now, if you're Yishmael, you're in a tough situation right now. Because like, you're like, wait a minute. I thought I was the main one. And now you're telling me my mother's really a handmaid into Sarah and I'm second fiddle. And that did not sit well with Yishmael or with Hagar, his mother. And that's why if you read the story in the text, Sarah has to send her away and this whole business because he can't, it, 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 it's, it's, I don't want to be second fiddle. I'm, I'm the main one. Now, just to give you a preview into the whole world of politics here, that is what is going on with the Arab-Israeli conflict. That's it. Simple. <laughs> Very simple. Because if you look at it, it, in the Quran, it mentions Mecca 700 times. Medina is mentioned over 350 times. You know how many times Jerusalem is mentioned? None. Zero. And there are Arab scholars who have said Jerusalem is not really that place. It's the Jews' place. There are some that I mentioned that. They're not very popular. But what happened? Why does, why does the, why do the Arabs have to feel that Jerusalem is their place? What is it? If you look at the way the Arabs understand the Bible, the Torah, and their version of it is kind of a confused version based on the Quran was like, was Muhammad hearing different stories and, but they're not in the right chronology. They're, 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 they're altered from, from, from the original text. And what happens is, is that the version that the Arabs had was that like Abraham, we know brought up Isaac as the offering and their version, who did he bring up as an offering? Ishmael. So with them, what's the battle? The battle is, yes, you're fine. You're the Jewish people. That's okay. But we're primary. And therefore, we should have the Temple Mount, the holiest place where God and the Jewish people connect and the whole world connects. That Temple Mount, it says that the Arabs will in the future want to put their place to block that, to say it's really us. That's the story there. Because Sarah, who is the main wife, and Hagar, who is the handmaiden, and that was a difficult thing to accept. And the reality is, is that there is a way the Arab nation can function properly within the whole perspective, but the, the imbalance is who's primary. That's the Arab issue. Now, what trait did the Arabs get from, from Abraham? The Arabs got the trait of being givers, like Abraham was. And, 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 and the reality is that today, even today, if you go to places like they're very much, you know, my brother who traveled to North Africa many years ago told me that, you know, they would bring him in and say, come in, come in. There was a certain uh, uh, open friendship type of thing, a certain giving. But as I said to you earlier, if you're giving and you're not guarding how you're giving, then you start giving in a way that becomes inappropriate. I see we have people here my age. There was a great song in 1969 by a group called Crosby, Stills, and Nash. And the, 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 the song was great, great group, one of my favorite groups. But... They had this uh, 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 song, and it said, if you can't be with the one you love, honey, love the one you're with. No, that is not appropriate. I am sorry, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and later Young, that is not the way we're supposed to go. But look at, look at what I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, love, 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 it turns into Southern California, it turns into Sodom, it turns into whatever it turns into. That's not already good. So knowing boundaries, when you're that, when you're that guy I mentioned before, like the Bill Clinton, you're the giver, you're the, you're the people person, you're, if you don't know your boundaries, you're going to cross those boundaries and we're going to have big problems. 
Now watch this amazing thing. <laughs> the Arabs then, I, I, I mean, it says in the Torah that they, they didn't accept the Torah because of that. Because that's not who they were. There were certain boundaries of the Torah that, that they, they said, this is not us. We're, we're not those kind of people. We couldn't do it. The religion that they created for themselves later, Islam means submission. So if you don't know your boundary and you're taking something from somebody else or you're expanding in a way that's not appropriate, so what they created for themselves was now to chop the hand off. That's, that's, that's the, the solution to stealing because they've got to recognize this is what, you know, and the religion that the people who took Abraham's quality of giving but didn't have it exactly right and led to this was a religion that would be submission. That is Yish, Yishmael, and that is coming from Abraham. Now, Abraham, he has another child called Yitzchak. Now, Yitzchak, it's crucial. He has a different approach in the world. He is controlling himself. He's very very internal, he's very exacting, and that's why all the people he brought in, Abraham brought into the fold, so to speak, they all left when Isaac became the one in charge, because they didn't like it. Isaac was like, Abraham was like, yeah, you know, God loves you, and I love you, it's great, and Isaac was like, wait, hey, get your act together. You're not, you're not doing the right thing, and people don't like to be told they're not doing the right thing. So Isaac had a different approach. He had an approach of knowing what was right and being very exacting. And that was his approach. And by the way, it was very good that that's what happened. It was appropriate. Because when you look at the pendulum of politics right now in the world, you realize that. See, you know, 1969, love, 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 you know, or, or, or just think about raising your own children. If you never tell your kid they're doing the wrong thing, it, it, it's going to backfire. So, so it, it's, it's beautiful to be able to show someone that you love them. But if you never tell them no, which Abraham didn't tell Yishmael, Abraham loved Yishmael very much and he didn't tell him no. And the world can't function that way. The world can't function that way. In the world, when you don't have the law to tell people you're doing the wrong thing and no, then eventually people start to get messed up. So it comes along Yitzhak, and he is now the one of self-control, restraint. He has two children too. He has Jacob, who is the father of the Jewish people, and he has Asov. Asov is very different because even though Isaac was controlling himself and mastering himself, Asov take that took that quality and misused it to control others. And he is the opposite. So if if, if Yishmael is the one of the pleasure and not the boundaries. Asav is the power man. He, he is the master of war. He's a warrior. He's out in the field. He's controlled. And he becomes the father of the spiritual father. There's some texts that even show that, that, that actually, there's a, there, there are texts in the prophets that actually show that there's, there's a, 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 a um, literal uh, um, connection uh, genealogically, that some that there were descendants of Asa that moved to Italy. There, there is the text, but but certainly spiritually, he's considered to be the spiritual father of Rome. Asa. Now that makes a lot of sense because what's what's Rome? Rome is the machine, the control, the power. Yeah, they blended in all their illicit relations too, but their thing was control, power. And that really came from Asaph. Now, um, now, what happened to Rome, we all know. Because Rome, it was like funny, because Rome, you know, I, I mentioned this last week, during the, the 
when, when Rome was starting to fall apart, even earlier than that, but, but at a certain point in Roman history, there was a tremendous amount of converts to Judaism. Because the stark contrast between the Roman view and people were worthless, you get thrown to the lions, and the Jewish sanctity of life, you know, was so stark in people's minds that there was a tremendous amount of people that were actually leaving Rome and starting to convert to Judaism. Well, came on Christianity at this point and offered kind of a, you know, kind of a, no, not a plethora of gods, like a smaller amount of sort of a combination, some taking some pagan uh, uh, um, traditions of this and of that, and the, 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 the tree and this, and, 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 and it made it, uh, you know, suitable for Rome and it eventually going to become the religion of Rome, right? What they call the Holy Roman Empire was when Rome turns to Christianity. I hope I'm allowed to say this to you all because it's a very deep idea, but I'm, I'm saying it because most of you come from this background to understand. The name Asaph, actually, if you flip the letters around, it spells the name of JC in Hebrew. It's crazy. Because that became the, the, the philosophy of Christianity. Christianity, you know, and, and it's the, the wildest thing because since they're inheritors of Rome, what religion do they take as a response to the being the, the, the warriors of Rome? Now they want to take a religion called religion of love, which is exactly the opposite. So, so we're really control. We're really the warriors. We make, law, we make rules of war. All right, you know, all right. But you're, you're, you, 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 you like war. I mean, you make war, what would you do? And now you're, you know, every certain amount of years, you fight a war, this is what you do. So now you take a religion that you say, oh, it's, 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 it's all love as sort of a counterbalance to the tendencies that you have. That is now the way the world started to <coughs> fold. Now listen to this amazing thing. So Jacob, who is now the father of Jewish people, he's the balance, he's truth, because if you're a person who is a person who has, who has, uh, you know, desire, well, if it's used properly as a giver, it's a wonderful thing. Mispro misused, you don't know boundaries, that's bad. If you're a person who has control, if you control yourself, it's wonderful. If you control others, it's not good. If you're a person of balance and of truth, then what happens is you make sure everything comes out right in your world. And that's Jacob. Now, I got to explain here. So now you have these two paradigms. You have Rome, again, Christianity, and you have the Ishmael, which becomes Islam. The, the, the reality is there are 70 nations in the world. There are 70 primal nations. Now, there's a lot more than that. But the 70 primal nations in the world, but they all fit under one of these two categories. Yishmael, father of the Arab nation, and Asav, father of the, of, of, of the Western nations, are essentially considered to be the, the forerunners of all of the nations now. And this is very important to know where the world has gotten. And we're talking about the world being messed up and what, how do I deal with that? So you have to understand these religions evolved and came into the world because of this place we're at now. And if you look at, at now, the 70 nations, we don't know who they are anymore because they're all mixed up. There's been, there's been, you know, many years of upheavals of, of, you know, conquering, uh, there was a great conqueror named Sancheriv, who was the, uh, the conqueror of the Assyrian nation thousands of years ago. He used to conquer people, move them around, and that was commonly done in the ancient world. So we don't know who the seven nations are. Everyone's mixed together. But, but nations will have a, a proclivity to one thing or the other, and these are the two primal roots of it, Asav and, uh, um, and, uh, 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 and Yishmael. Now, 
we look at the world now in my in the second part of my series of of why the world's so screwed up well now we can understand this next section because now the world is going to uh, if, if, if I don't know the truth and I don't have the truth and I take another system and I'm a little bit off kilter and I build a whole world based on that, you're going to have a lot of problems. And that really is the situation. The situation in the world is, is there's, there are a lot of religions that created and, and stuff that is, we have to understand what is true right now. Now, as one I mentioned once before, I want to just, just, just reiterate this. This I can't tell you for sure, but this is, it, it's a theory and it's, it's, it's has a lot of, uh, makes a lot of sense. It says in the text that Abraham had uh, many ch other children later on. And it says that he gave them gifts and sent them to the East. Now, who are these, who are these children of Abraham? And when he sent them to the East, what gifts did he give them? The gifts they gave them were spiritual powers, but were not lined up with the essence of truth. And this part, I don't know for sure, but if you look at when the Brahmin came to India, who became the head of the, of the Indian caste system, it actually follows exactly the timeline when Abraham sent his children to the East. So it could be that, that, that afterwards, these people went to the East, they taught some spiritual things that were not tuned into the ultimate truth, but they were certain spiritual powers and they became the leaders of those people. That's the way in phase two, the world has looked. The world until pretty recently, because in, in recent times, um, the world has moved away from religion in a lot of senses. But for quite a long time, there was the Christian world with its approach, the Muslim world with its approach, and generally, they were killing each other. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like people, you know, and, and it's a little problem in the Western world to realize, like, in the Western world, they forgot that the Crusades were happening and the philosophy of the Western world became, okay, it's over. We're living our Western lives and we're enjoying it and we, we like, you know, good lifestyle. The, the Muslim world has not necessarily embraced that same philosophy. They have actually a much stronger belief system in what they call they want Sharia law. They want they want at least the the you know the the a large major a large number. I don't know. I can't give you the number, but but a large number of of Muslims. Their goal is still the same goal as it was two thousand years ago, which was the eventual uh, um, imposition of Sharia law of Islamic law on the entire world. That that's still that hasn't changed so much. The Western world kind of thinks that well, okay, we've all changed that, but that's not exactly true. That's why even like you have you know, in Israel, you have something called a hudna. A hudna is called um, a, 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 a ceasefire. So sometimes you'll hear when you know God forbid there's trouble in Israel, then they negotiate and they create the hudna. Hudna is a ceasefire. The only problem is the word hudna does not mean ceasefire. It, 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 it actually, in Arabic, is the idea of taking a step back, regrouping for the next assault. It's not, it's not like, okay, let's, you know, it, it's, 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 I okay, guess, let's, let's pause to regroup ourselves to go forward. So this is right now the world we're in. Now, I want to just share with you one last piece that's very fascinating, which I talked about before also. But in the future, we don't know when, but it says that there's going to, in the book of Ezekiel, it says that there is going to be wars that's going to be directed towards Israel. And there'll be an alignment between these two camps. The camp of some of the Arab nations with the camp of the Western Christian nations. And they will ask you a line to fight against Israel and the Jewish people. Now, when it is, I don't know. But we can see different alliances and different things happening. And what happens is there eventually in the book of Ezekiel and book of Yechasko, chapter 38, it, it comes out that eventually these camps start to break apart. 
because they realize that their own belief system is contrary to each other. They, they, they'll call each other more infidels than, than even, even the Jews. So they, their alliance will eventually fall apart. And that is actually the preceding of the idea of the coming of Mashiach that happens. And it really ties into what my point was today, which is that the world, when it creates philosophies that are not tuned into the system, it's going to fall apart. It can't not. It, it, it's not about a person being smart and charismatic. It's about what is the truth? What does God say we're supposed to do? There's no, every single human philosophy, whether it's communism, socialism, every single one will eventually fall apart. I mentioned, I, I think I mentioned this here, here, but when I was a kid, when I was, when I was a young uh, 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 um, a couple, my wife, and we had a trial, we read, you know, Dr. Spock, that was the book. I, I, I think today, if I use Dr. Spock, they'd call it child abuse, who, who knows? You know, so every single generation, it's like, you know, you know, then, but that philosophy, that was ridiculous. And now we all, which we see happening in America in a very serious way that, you know, if you're, if you're that now the, the new generation of Facebook, then everyone else was a, was a racist and a terrible person. And now you're enlightened, but it's always like that because every man-made philosophy is not tuned into the root. So what we understand is, is that from the roots of people's negative traits, we talked about last week, from the unbridled desire, or from the anger, or from their desire to have honor and not to relate to God, all of those negative traits led the world for the first 2,000 years of creation in a very bad way. After that, what happened was the Jewish people, for in, in, in from that time of Abraham, there was a period of 2,000 years where the Jews had the temple in Jerusalem, and they had a time of, of, of the books of, uh, of, 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 the, of, the, of the prophets, and you see there was, there was tremendous greatness until it started to, they started not keeping the words of the prophets and the words of the Torah, and they started falling apart. And, and the other people were taking their negative challenges and they creating philosophies by which they would live their lives but those have have sort of directed the world on a global level not on a spiritual level the spiritual level is still one of the truth but that's been the way the world has gone for a while now and that's the negativity that we've seen in the past you know where people you know in the name of this religion will kill and then that religion will do this will that do that because if it's not true you could do, you know, and that, and that was always the people who, who were against religion in general said, well, how many people have died because of religion? Well, yeah, it, it's got to be true. If it's not correct and you believe it's correct, you believe you got to kill someone else or do this or that. So, yeah, it's going to some some very negative things will come out in the world. And that has been for a long time the middle phase that we're talking about. OK. Next week, I'm going to talk about the new phase that we're in, which is the atheist phase from Darwinism and on and the other philosophies that have come out since then. And we'll try to get to our times. So that's my idea today. We'll open up to some discussions about this. We'll talk about next time about anything else.